Testament, John and others. And uh, Paul knows about the terminology. And the scrolls, people are calling themselves obviously the sons of light. Everyone thinks they're the sons of light and the others are the sons of darkness. That's just normal in life. I'm sure Bin Laden thinks he's the son of light and we're the son of darkness. We think we're the sons of light and he's the son of darkness. That's just the way it is. Although he really is the son of darkness, it seems to me, but uh, you can't get much darker than that, it seems. People kill innocent people, behead people, fly in the buildings, kill children, everything else. They try to compare that. I heard a guy at the UN comparing it to what Israel, you don't blame Israel, what Israel does. But what Israel does. Israel goes around deliberately killing children, you mean? They could kill mean children if they wanted. They don't kill anybody. They only kill in retribution of, for people who have blown up uh, buses and things and trying to get the leaders and they're hiding among innocent people so innocent people get killed in the process. But that's not deliberately going out to kill children. That's just uh, confusion in brain. You know, um, it's just uh, sad uh, to think, oh, we haven't done anything to provoke this. Uh, yeah, you, you've done things to provoke this. If you didn't blow up little children, people wouldn't be trying to blow up the people who are blowing up little children. So, yeah, but you start with the blowing up of little children. So innocence, if you're killing innocence with no, for no reason than some political motivation or religion, then, then you're in a, a different league. And people don't get that straight, just don't know where, just don't have their brains screwed up like you, you're beheading innocent people or that kind of stuff just <laughs> for the sake of making propaganda or whatever. You're in another ballpark. So yeah, you are a son of darkness as far as I'm concerned. And you should be uh, dealt with, because uh, otherwise you're going to keep on doing this, like uh, all kinds of rapists, murders, and really kind of people, if you don't stop it. So, in any case, uh, this Sons of Light and Sons of Darkness is this scroll document. It's a little bit extreme. It's a holy war against all the Sons of Darkness on the earth, which is going to be helped by angels, angelic angels, and the angelic host that's going to join the sons of light on this earth and participate in this war. And this war is a messianic war because it's going to be led by the star, the, the, the Messiah. So that's very Christian, yet it's not Christian because it's a really overt war against darkness and evil on this earth, not in a supernatural heavenly sphere. So uh, there the star prophecy is quoted in total detail in order to explain what this war is going to be like and who's going to be leading it and uh, and how it's going to be fought. And that's another document that's going on. So you see, we have a different kind of messianic movement here. We have a native Palestinian messianic movement. That's what people miss in the scrolls. You, you hear about the scrolls and you hear all kinds of nonsense about the scrolls. If I were listening to scholars talking about the scrolls, I wouldn't recognize them at all. I, you know, I don't know where their mind is at. I do know where their it's being filtered through theology of some kind, Christian or Jewish theology, but their mind is not coming to grips in a real way with the scrolls themselves. It's been spun through a theological pattern. And just about all the scholars come from seminaries of some kind, Protestant seminaries, Jewish seminaries, Mormon seminaries, or, uh, or Catholic seminaries. We just don't have secular scholars doing this at the extent that we should, and now we're getting more, I hope, with state universities like this, and UC system and everything else, which don't have schools of theology attached to them. Berkeley does have a school of theology, by the way, attached to it. So it is not really in this category, but I don't think UCLA does. A lot of schools don't have theology schools attached to them, but private universities almost all have theology schools attached to them. And the people who teach these subjects double within the theology school and in the, and so you're dead in the water in most of these places with getting a, a totally unfiltered view. Those people may be good, but they're still gonna they're gonna deny their own theology? I don't think so. And they're still gonna, you know, go only so far and then stop. So that's one of the problems in this field of the people who um, work on so this is a totally different messianism. Very aggressive, very militant messianism, still messianism in Star Wars. Finally you have a group of texts, I think it's called the Testimonia, but this is a collection of proof texts collection of proof texts that, um, well, we got a new garbage pail for cans. I'll be that. A collection of proof texts that uh, are just like the kind of things that you'll get handed out by, you know, 
religious enthusiasts on campuses or elsewhere listing the different texts that are supposed to apply to your time and place. And among the texts that are picked out are familiar ones that we sometimes even use today, but also the Star Prophecy. So we have three different uh, versions of the Star Prophecy. And finally, Josephus says, at the end of his war, when he talks about the omens that brought about the war against Rome, he says that in addition to all these omens, there was an odd oracle in the Jewish scripture that some interpreted one way, some interpreted another way, but which our young men were zealous for. That a world ruler would come out of Palestine. And all kinds of bad things happened to our people because of this oracle and the people who were zealous for it. Wars were fought and so on and so forth. And finally he says that the war against Rome was, was actually triggered or encouraged or based on this star prophecy. So the war from 66 to 70 that he's documenting was actually uh, motivated by the star prophecy on the Jewish side, which means that the warriors on the Jewish side were Messianic warriors. Now, very few people see that quote in Josephus, but it is there. That's no wonder that the <coughs> Romans then, who were picking up the star prophecy, from their point of view, want to sort of uh, pacify this in some way. Get rid of the militancy. Get rid of the aggressive warlikeness. Get rid of this holy, holy warrior, Al-Qaeda, you know, Bin Laden sort of ethos that was going on in Palestine at this time. We now have a, a very good model with the Bin Laden sort of extreme Islamic ethos. You know, and uh, you know, I can assure you that the Mel Gibson movie is not incorporating this kind of situation in, his, in what he's portraying. There. I mean, uh, you know, we have this extreme situation in Palestine. A combination of religious, national, no, nationalism with extreme religiosity. And it's an incendiary situation, and the Romans aren't used to it. Romans are used to, like, you know, what we call pagan countries, like Gaul, who have some tribes, who have some druids or some, you know, shaman type, you know, nature spirited kind of leaders and people. And they can't stand up to the mechanized might of a Roman arm, a legion, legionary army and uh, totally organized and professional. And they, they, they ripped through these society like uh, easy, the way Bush went to uh, Baghdad. But uh, then 